Look at us. Who would have thought? We're talking about remote learning. Okay, so I did make a promise that I would not start yelling about how great teachers are. Okay, actually, you know what? I didn't make that promise. I might do it. Who knows? So uh, I love you guys to just start throwing out questions. Uh, just give you some context while we're waiting on the questions to come in. I've taught at a um, 6th through 12th grade level and a higher education level. I've utilized Google. I've utilized Odysseyware, Blackboard. Um, we've used Genzabar. So we've used a ton of different resources. Moodle did that little guy. That's uh, not a very good platform. Just straight up tell you that. Um, I'll be honest with you. So if you have real questions, ask. I'll tell you struggles. I'll give you tips. Your boy ain't going to lie to you. So let's talk, throw in some comments and questions. And we'll rock and roll. Um, they're a little bit delayed on the comments. They like pop in uh, late, but um, definitely going to show Julie. Let's get the party started in here. I think uh, who said it best? My God, peace. That's right. So in the comments, you guys know you're you're YouTube pros now. We're in the Baller Teacher Conference. We are throwing out skills. If you're not part of the conference, that's fine. Just join us. Hang out. We're talking about remote learning. Throw in some questions. Um, ooh, great. Okay, Aaron, great choice. So let's get this thing going because uh, we're starting our next session and it's actually going to be a live session with a presentation with Lindsay Fell and we're talking about YouTube and video creation in there. So let's kick off with this with Aaron. Aaron said, do you prefer YouTube for online lectures? Yes, I do because I feel like that takes up a ton of your class time and I've, I've said it in I think a video but then also I, I said it in the last live chat so it's been a ton of but um, with the YouTube, like if you're getting the lectures, if you're doing it yourself, great, you control the content, but you can also string together like three or four different videos if you want them to watch them and just organize them in your own playlist and then just assign the playlist to the classroom. That's what I used to do in uh, my college math class that I taught. I would go in and I'd find multi-step equations and I'd pull, you know, three of my videos and two other videos of other people, not con, never con. Um, he's fine. And so I'd put those videos in and the student's assignment would be to watch that because that was about what we were gonna talk about next time. And I wanted them to get a head start so we can kick off class running. I'm not like having to start from scratch. They had to take notes, that's how I took proof. And they would take a picture of it with their phone and upload it to Google Classroom. Cause I found out once I got back in the classroom and taught some of those college classes, I cannot stand having paper everywhere. Oh my goodness, I couldn't do it. Um, okay, Tara. Tara has said difference between level one and level two test. Okay, it's been a few years since I took it, but if it's not changed, uh, the difference is level one is a lot of like how to go in here and do this. Like it's the stuff, honestly, if you've been using Google for a few years, you could probably go in and do well on the level one test. It's, you know, how to share something, how to uh, change the name of a file, like all this stuff you've probably already been doing. Level two takes it to, a, a, it's like they include a lot more calendars, tasks, kind of like those exterior things that people use in Google, but it's not like your, your doc sheet, slides, drive. It's not your basics. And then they want you to share stuff as well. Um, that Those two playlists, that'll give you a really good idea. Uh, the bit.ly slash gtarver is level one. Bit.ly slash gtarver2 is the other one. Zoom versus YouTube. What do you think, honestly? I'll be honest, Mary. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to let y'all see this. I'll be honest. I, I won't use Zoom. I won't use it. I, I'll use it for people that invite me to meetings. I just, I don't know. Like, here's my thing. In five years, you're not going to be using Zoom. You're going to be using Google Meet. You just are. And you know why? Because it's incorporated with everything else you're doing. It's secure. Google Google does online video better than anyone. It's why they've dominated the YouTube platform, YouTube TV, um, YouTube Premium. Like, it's better than everywhere else. They're even dominating, you know this, YouTube Music. It's all the stream, all the stream music on the internet. Spotify, uh, Apple, Pandora, all of it. 50% of all music streamed on the internet is through YouTube. They're even winning at music and we don't even know it. It's, it's insane, I'm sorry. They're, they're good, they're gonna keep getting better. Zoom, they just aren't gonna be able to keep up. YouTube's too good. Uh, Lillian, check it in, what up? Uh, I think it may be crazy watching the comments in YouTube. However, Zoom students talk over each other. Yeah, that's the thing with Zoom. And um, honestly, I just like it all being contained in my Google Classroom and then keeping it there. It's just simpler for the students. Why would you spread it out across the platform? Uh, okay, keep asking questions, guys, and we'll keep answering them. Does it offer options to record? Yes. Um, see, it's Google. Like, oh, I'll, I'll talk about the fail bail. I talked about it in the comments, but I didn't talk about it in the meeting. So um, 
this last year, 2019, I got accepted as a Google innovator. It's the, something Google does every year. They've got like three or four different cohorts around the world and they take uh, anywhere from 36 to 42 educators get to go and be a part of this. You go train for like three or four days with all these educators. And I was in the North America one. We had 42 people and they, we got the chance to see a lot of Google's culture. And I, I'm getting to a point on this with regards to Google Meet, okay? Because they used to not be Google Meet. Like two months ago, it was Google Hangouts. And honestly, they've been phasing out Google Hangouts for two years now, okay? Here's why. Google is it's like whenever we as teachers, we think we're so like, because we're teachers, a lot of times we were good at school. We pass, fail. We do well on tests. You pass, you fail. With Google, their mentality is not pass or fail. They almost celebrate failure. So we all had projects we we're working on and we developed them over the week. And it was okay to come in and get accepted into this innovator thing with an idea for a project and then completely change it after a day. And they had bells on all of our tables. And if somebody changed, they called a fail bell, they had to ring the bell and that everybody would start cheering because it meant that I have pushed what I wanted to do as far as I could and I've realized I've found something better. Um, whenever you have options to do stuff, and you realize it failed and you can learn from it and grow and you're going to make it better. I mean, like what's the uh, Thomas Edison's quote? Um, the only reason I've succeeded is because I found 10,000 ways that I did it wrong or something like that. I tear, I butchered that, but the fail bell is a really good idea. And it's a great mentality to have in your class. And um, I don't know why I start talking about, Oh, cause Google, they listed off first date. They listed off all these things that they had that had tanked. Google Glass, Google, you remember Google Plus, all these like different programs and it had like a rest in peace, like all the dates that they ended. And they talked about how they celebrate that at Google. They want to try stuff. They want to learn from it. They want to get better. That's why they're one of the top companies in the world. Okay. Uh, uh, they just increased the limit for Google Meet. Um, I think I want to say it's up to two, 200 maybe. Uh, I, I'd have to check on that. I haven't tested the limit. Is there a reasonable we'll setup videos outside of class for math in the younger grades? Yeah, um, there is. You're going to have to just, it's honestly, you have to pretend when you're talking on the phone like you're talking to a kid. And it's like you have to assume the parts are going to mess up and you're going to walk them through it. Um, I've been doing, with my dissertation uh, for my class, <laughs> humble bro, um, I'm studying what type of educational videos keeps the attention of students longer. I have found through my research, students, especially younger ones, they want to see your face and they want to see diagrams in your screen. So, Get an iPad, do a split screen with your face in that. Uh, YouTube scares me sometimes because of ads. Yes, it should. You know, you can pay $10 a month and get YouTube premium, and there's no ads on anything. Also, you can listen to music offline, like any video and music, you can listen to it out of the app, and you get access to YouTube premium, and you can uh, download videos offline. Uh, I've contacted on issues, suggestions for, keep throwing in questions, you guys. Uh, more info on trainers and innovators. Okay, great. Uh, I would love to give you that. So Google certified ed educator level one. It's a three hour test, costs like 10 bucks. It's that spreadsheet I have, that checklist at bit.ly slash tarber. You pass that, that's your first step. Second step is to pass the level two exam. It's like that one, just but a little juiced up, okay? It's bit.ly slash tarber two. Um, after you pass those two, you can apply to be a trainer or an innovator. You don't have to be one of those to be the other one. Um, usually people go for trainer first because it's easier to get in. Uh, it's, you would have to film yourself talking about the stuff you do with Google, and then you have to show them how to use something with Google and you send it in. Um, it's a great community. If you go to conferences, they all, Google always does like an innovator hangout and a trainer hangout, and you get to go to these exclusive like stuff. It, it's really cool. And Google is just a really fun company. You know, I got that, and then I got the Apple uh, Distinguished Educator. If you can do that, uh, you should. Lindsay, Phil. And I were the only two people from Arkansas that got in in 2019. They accept about 150 people every two years in North America. So you should apply for that as well. Those are both really good communities. Um, can you create all this with your iPad? Absolutely, you can. Um, there are some apps where you can record your face and the screen at the same time. That's going to be the easiest for you. That way you're not like setting up your phone and running the iPad and the sync. There's an app that does it. I don't know. Not Screencastify. I know that's for Chromebook. I would just Google record, you know my space and the screen. Um, I use Notability to write on. Um, yes, have the spreadsheet on my computer. My list, 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 clarification. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, 25 bucks. Thank you for looking that up. Uh, look on the screen. It's 10 bucks for level one, 25 for level two. Not bad at all. And here's the thing, guys. I've interviewed a ton of people for teaching positions. Hardly anybody 
comes into an interview. I think we may have interviewed one person who had a level one. It's like Google's a thing we use more than anything with classroom and docs and sheets and slides, and nobody's getting certified in it. It's great if you want to move up at your place or if you want to uh, if you want to go out and train people or you know interview for a new job. Uh, what platform do you use to have your videos on one side and the computer screen on the other side like you did with Leanne? Oh, okay. So that, those videos, what I did was I edited those in Premiere. Um, those are like, not, I didn't, Premiere is the Adobe one. I use Final Cut Pro. It's the Apple version. You have to have an Apple computer to do Final Cut Pro. It's like 300 bucks one time. Um, iMovie, it's like souped up iMovie. And I just edited, I synced them up and I moved Leanne's video up here. The template, was the hard one because my buddy Steven Overturf he created a lot of that the design for me and so I had to like adjust it without making it look ugly because I stretch it out and he makes it look good but uh it was great uh the goal this summer Google certified yes you should Mary I highly recommend all of you guys that's my challenge to you this summer and also you should check with your principal a lot of times schools will give you like three hours of PD um three hours of PD for doing the test so you could go in and say hey here's what I want to do. I want to pass this exam. Can I watch this PD video? And you can watch one of mine or you can watch video tutorials or whatever on my website and then watch those for three hours and then take the test for three hours and ask if they'll count it for six hours. A, a decent administrator will count it unless they don't know what they're talking about. Um, yes. Thank you for using those. And Google has training stuff too. And the cool thing with Google is for their training videos, they'll use people's videos that have already made them. So like a couple of my videos are being viewed on Google's website because they help people through there um not an apple fan yeah so you don't use it for the iphones put in the comments are you an iphone user anybody everybody iphone is that your thing um let me know Ooh, i knew this would come up and i want to answer it okay so josh lawrence great question thank you for asking um joshua said how do you combat the issue of lack of internet service or technology in student home when trying to implement a flipped classroom or I got all the answers from the iPhone. A lot of iPhone fans. I like it. Um, so, uh, and implement a flipped or semi-flipped classroom. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. There's different answers based on when you're there. So when I was, when, okay, the school I was the principal. Um, most of the students were there all day. They all had devices. Everybody could either take that. I've had minis that they would use to put their books and documents on. And then they could also use Chromebooks. So those are their two main devices that they use. Um, so what you have to do if you have the students at all. So we had some that were like blended learning and all their classes were online. And so I heard more than you'll ever like hear in your life. Oh, I can't work on it because I have internet at home. And what I have to train them is that is not an excuse you can rely on because your internet didn't get cut off the, the night of. You knew going home that you weren't going to have access to the internet for your devices. So what you have to teach your students to do is they have to be, they have to be prepared and they have to do, spend their time at school where they have the Wi-Fi. They have to do that with, uh, they have to do that with, I'm sorry, I got distracted because I saw text. They have to do that while they're under Wi-Fi. Does that make sense? It doesn't because I didn't explain it well and I got stuttery. Whenever they're at school, they need to screenshot text, download documents. Um, you as a teacher, you can upload, like if it's a really important video and you want them to watch it, you can download it, put it in Google Drive, have all the students mark that folder as viewable offline so they can watch it offline. They've got to prepare for not having internet at home. So where they might, you know, um, where they might at school take like write in answers to a long essay or exam, research and then write the essay, you have to teach them, look, you know, when you go home, you're not going to have access to just write. You don't need to write this whole thing. You need to go in and research every question, download all the information you might use, and then you can actually attach that to each question. Like, don't do things like you traditionally do because you don't have the internet or the access at home. Uh, other times I tell them, like, sometimes you just got to go to Starbucks or Chick-fil-A or McDonald's and get it. So, uh, Lindsay, signed up an hour ago. Got to watch a few vids before. Yes, you're going you're gonna to do it. You're going to kill it. You're going to do it. Everybody else, my challenge to you this summer. Pass that Google Certified Level 1 Educator Exam. Do it. It's worth $10, I promise. A lot of times districts will pay for it too. Uh, Joshua, I didn't answer your question on if we're fully online or remote. That's harder because they don't have that time at school to download everything. Um, one thing is look at their parents because they're still posting on Facebook. And guess what? You need the internet to post on Facebook. So most of them have internet. But 
you need to tell them, look, you're just going to have to drive up and sit in the parking lot at Starbucks or McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or at the school. That's what a lot of schools are doing. They're allowing people to have like drive-in lots and they're moving like the, the access point that was on the football field out into a parking lot. Um, Androids, iPhones, iPhone all day, boy. Um, Android, Android's good. I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know me, I love Google and Google is more fit with Android and I actually have like Google Home so it would work better. I've almost switched to a, a Google Pixel as my phone, but the, the reason I didn't is because with work, I'm in so many group texts. I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, okay. Here, I've got, there's somebody said something in here about cheating. This is something we ran into and I want to point it out, especially with online. Whenever you give an assignment and you just got to know students are going to default, humans in general default to just getting it done as quick as possible, easy as possible. They'll copy paste. They'll search Google, copy paste, and put it in there. My first tip to you as a teacher is if they can Google your answers on your test and pass, you're asking the wrong question. You need to ask them questions that they have to apply to themselves, that they have to process through their own, like you got to make them change how they're thinking when they're putting out these answers. So those are my thoughts on that. And then, um, oh, there was another thing I was going to say with regards to cheating. Explain to your students what plagiarism is. A lot of students do not understand what plagiarism is. I'm serious. I know it sounds silly, but they, I, okay, true story. I had a young lady. She was smart, smart young lady. She was a 10th grader and she copy pasted. She copy pasted from Google, dropped it in there, and submitted it as an English assignment. English teacher came to me, said she cheated on the whole thing. I'm going to give her a zero. I said, okay, let me, I'll bring her my office. She also gets like a, I don't know, day of ISS or whatever she gets for it. Brought her in there. I was like, hey, I'm sorry, you plagiarized on this assignment. Um, you plagiarized on the assignment, so I'm going to give you a zero. And she goes, I didn't plagiarize. I go, well, yeah, you did. You plagiarized. She goes, no, I didn't. And it was weird because she never lies to me on stuff. Like, she's always like openly honest. She's one of those students who just tells you everything. Like, oh, I fed my horse today. I'm like, okay, I didn't know that. Um, so I, I pressed her on it. I was like, so you didn't plagiarize these answers. She's like, mm -mm, I didn't, I promise. I was like, okay, well, I typed in this question. It is word for word exactly what it is on the first results of Google. And she said, and I quote, no, I did not plagiarize. I typed all of that in myself. She did not understand the concept of plagiarism. She thought just retyping it and not using copy paste meant that it was worth her submitting as her work. You've got to explain clearly to these students multiple times what it is, what's expected, and what counts as plagiarism. Um, excellent. Yes, uh, James, that's spot on what I was saying earlier. You have to say, you have to have deep, meaningful questions that show their knowledge and application. That's great. I tried to do that in those, like this right here. I tried to do that in these digital citizenship courses that are free. I'm not trying to sell anything, but it's just an idea. If you ever want this template, Make a copy of this doc and just delete all my stuff out of it. I've actually got a Google form you can just type in and it fills this out for you. But I try to run everything through like the the mirror or the the, the filter of personal application. Okay, excellent. Uh, Lindsay, you're right. They they just they don't know. They they don't. It's they're growing up. They're growing up. We're about to at the end. They're growing up in a society where finding the answer quicker is more valuable than fully comprehending it it's like they just want to search on the phone find the answer and move on like we have to train in them like no you need to have a depth of knowledge and how do you do that you have to you have to go deeper on it with the questioning um you explain your syllabus uh, good and then i would i would keep explaining it because their kids have a short memory span it takes several years of instruction and some students to understand yeah it does i didn't i didn't know like i didn't know you couldn't take ideas and i paid attention in class uh i, I take ideas like take the concept of an idea you have to just like make it up on your own. Uh, I had to explain to my fourth grader this year. Yes, it's, um, I'm gonna have to explain it to my oldest son because he memorizes everything. So I know he's just gonna memorize stuff from Google and then write it down. So um, I, I don't know if I missed any other questions. Uh, I think we got a lot of iPhone users, which is totes cool. You can do group messages. Thank you guys. I know that was quick. Hope you've eaten lunch. I'll be grabbed a snack. Um, but we are about to get to here from my friend, Lindsay Fell. Lindsay is like a two-time Bryant uh, Teacher of the Year. She's an Apple Distinguished Educator. So she is phenomenal, very creative, does some really good stuff. And that's the thing, like, while I've got the chance to oversee K-12 and I've been a principal and taught with 6-12, most of my, like, 
traditional teaching environment was high school level, like eighth through 12th grade and then college. And so it's like, I know a lot of, you know, teachers K-12 or, or K through four or five, they like to be like, well, mine's a little different. I agree. Cause I haven't been in the trenches like you have just every day. Lindsay is elementary and she is still incorporating this stuff and it's in art as well. So I love that because it's something outside of like the traditional four uh, courses. So I'm about to get off here. We have the link at tarveracademy.com slash baller. Uh, my mom's been texting me all day. She's like, where am I supposed to be? Mom, go to tarveracademy.com slash baller. And that's my, my last name is T-A-R-V-E-R, mom. And you're going to click on the one for 1230. Okay. You guys, it's going to be, it's going to be like a full session, like we've been doing on the premiere, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be live. So Lindsay and I'll be live. You guys can throw in questions. We'll be able to answer them. So I want you guys to ask a lot of questions because then I'll be moderating. It gives me a lot to talk about. Cause obviously I just love to talk. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> Jess, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't have been mean. I should have been made. I'm so glad. I'm so glad she's just here. You know, I'm just glad she's joining us. I'm kidding. She, she probably didn't make it, but you know, she's great. She's great. I haven't seen her comment. So you guys have commented. So I'll see you guys at Christmas. All right. I'm going to end this. I'll see you guys in eight minutes. See you soon.